Hi, my name is uh, Borgar Jostan. I'm the CEO of uh, FXI Technologies and I'm here to uh, talk a little bit about uh, FXI and uh, the cotton candy that we uh, announced now 369 days ago here in uh, wonderful New York. Uh, some of you uh, have, uh, have been very uh, interested in understanding where we are with the product. So, uh, <coughs> so today I'm, I'm, I brought with me kind of where we are in terms of, uh, of, uh, of the, 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 the platform. Uh, I have a uh, ice cream sandwich uh, version with me and I have a Linux version with me. Uh, anyone that has a cotton candy can download the latest supported uh, software image uh, from, from our website uh, and, and basically burn that image onto an SD card and then run uh, that image uh, on the cotton candy. So in, in uh, this case I, I have uh, here the uh, ICS image. A lot of people are asking, you know, why doesn't it have Google Play uh, installed? Uh, and that's uh, something that, that we are uh, working on. Uh, right now we are not shipping the Google Play because in order to do that we need to be uh, a Google approved uh, device. Uh, and uh, there is a process in order to go through that which, uh, which we, are, uh, we are in. Uh, and uh, I think we are the only small form factor computer that, that actually are in such a process right now. Uh, but we, we have also seen that people in our community have started to install Google Play on uh, a new community image regardless. Yeah. That's not something that we as a company can support as, you know, IP is something that's really, really uh, important uh, to us. There has been a lot of uh, interest in the form factor after we launched it and, uh, and we have started to see a lot of small form factor computers uh, or HDMI dongles coming out there which basically are designed to, uh, to, uh, to make the TV smart. One of the things that, that separates us a little bit is that we have a very high-end focus uh, and especially focused on 3D graphics. Actually FXI Technologies uh, spins out from a graphics company uh, that was called Phalanx Microsystems, which was acquired by ARM uh, and is uh, basically um, the technology behind the Demali graphics course, which we'll find in a lot of high-end consumer products today. I want to show you uh, a, a pretty interesting one, Qu quite high-end uh, 3D graphics uh, demo, which basically shows off some of the capabilities uh, of the cotton candy. Uh, this is not a video, it's a real-time rendered graphics. And clearly, the ability to do very advanced high-end graphics uh, in 1080p is one of the key features of the Cotton Candy that makes it uh, very, you know, a, a very suitable uh, platform for uh, desktop-like applications, but also for games and, uh, and uh, productivity applications. In the device, uh, it's a dual Cortex-A9 1.2 GHz uh, CPU, uh, and it has a quad-core Mali 400 uh, in it. So when you're running a type of these type of applications like games and, and uh, heavy 3D graphics, the GPU are fully loaded. They are really, you know, pushing it out there, so uh, several gigapixels per per, per second. Uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, you know, to 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 show a more uh, game-like experience on this, this, if you look at what's available for for typical ARM devices today, there's there's actually not a lot of applications fully utilizing the graphics capabilities yeah, yeah. of the Cotton Candy. This one, uh, this application is developed by a company called Outrax Technology, a brilliant uh, company that, that has a lot of experience on, on uh, what you can call mobile graphics. Uh, they have developed this uh, game uh, demo to show off what you actually can expect out of, uh, of the cotton candy as a gaming platform, as a, how, how powerful it actually is. One thing to notice here is that this is uh, actually, uh, you know, running with full scene 16x anti-aliasing. That's something that you won't find even in, you know, high-end set of, uh, sorry, game consoles uh, from, you know, uh, Sony or Microsoft today. So it's it's extremely powerful uh, from from a from from a graphics perspective. And this. Uh, Yeah, 
so you can basically spend you know quite a lot of time playing this game. Well, the fact that you have a device as small as this with your own user interface installed. You can basically configure uh, either Android or Linux uh, the way you want on this device and you can bring that environment with you uh, to any screen, whether at work or at home, is, is kind of the, uh, the, the real differentiating factor. So, I'm out of power here. I'll jump to this. Okay, try again. So I plugged uh, the device uh, into a Mac here. And you will see the same user interface uh, as uh, we just saw on the TV. Uh, and uh, here you actually have virtualized the Mac OS X. So you can now basically uh, operate the cotton candy entirely using your, your keyboard and mice or whatever other peripheral that you have attached to it. So, so I go to a friend's house, I don't like Macs, I can plug my cotton candy and do Correct. whatever I want. Correct. But as you can see, the performance when operating over USB is uh, the same as, uh, as you notice on, on the TV side. I think this ability to move that, you know, your own environment from, from place to place, from screen to screen, from context to context, yes. is the key with the cotton candy. It's not a set of box designed to sit it's by the TV. It's the flexibility. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's to be in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And clearly, from an entertainment perspective, it's quite obvious that uh, having access to to uh, all of your <laughs> games or whatever you want to do uh, at the workplace uh, without you know having uh, having um, the IT department Moment, approving yeah, yeah. because this is a memory device the OS doesn't know what's going on here at all no. so so that that brings you uh, a lot of flexibility to you but also the other way around no. uh, the the uh, the enterprises uh, basically. Uh, with people bringing their own laptops have a huge challenge in providing the security, security. and uh, the service and support that, that workers need for, for using the, the enterprise basically uh, applications and so on. With this device, you, you just hand out this to an employee and they can use whatever uh, laptop they want. they want. Now I see you, you, you connect it directly to the Mac. Is that through USB or through HDMI? That's through USB. USB. So there, there are no PCs uh, that we know of that it's have a TV in. Yeah. Uh, and this is also the essence of the cotton candy. It's a memory device. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not a, it's, it's a memory device uh, with compute capabilities. So but USB for power as well as also inputs. Yes. So there's no need for an external power source. That's correct. Okay, that's, in, that's in this use case. Is, okay, that's very nice. Can you talk more about the you physical changes to the design? Cause yeah, we. Um, uh, I know we had uh, the la the last time we saw it. It was it's still a prototype then, so design changes were different. But we can see that it's it's changed. Yeah, it's changed uh, actually quite uh, a lot. Uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, a year ago uh, the prototype plastic, uh, it was uh, a different design than today. We wanted uh, the design to be even smaller, and it was uh, was room for that. So we decided to make a very clean design. Uh, and have an efficient way to basically protect both the HDMI connector and the USB port with what we call a double cap, like this. This will eventually exist in multiple colors for those interested in that. <laughs> um, we, we also have uh, added a micro USB port okay. as there are a lot of use cases for, for instance, attaching a camera to it and, mm -hmm. and then do phone uh, video conferences uh, okay. over it. And as you can see, of course, the um, what is that a power port or? Uh, this one is actually a Bluetooth uh, connect button. Oh, okay. Yes, so you can connect off-the-shelf Bluetooth accessories to it. So that that's actually uh, the one of the things that we are working on now to stabilize Bluetooth because mm -hmm. we noticed after you know uh, many people have tested it that the Bluetooth performance is not as optimal as mm -hmm. it should be. But that's uh, something that uh, that will be in place uh, hopefully by the end of th this year. I see, I see you guys, you know, you've really streamlined the design, so, I yeah. mean, it looks, to me, it looks like the size of, say, 120 gigabytes flash card, yeah. flash drive. Yeah, and that, that's, that's uh, basically also our design uh, goal.
mm. uh, it, it shouldn't be bigger than a USB stick that people are used to. Yeah. Uh, it, it should not be like a, a very small set of box, it should be as small as a USB stick. This Ubuntu, so you have, for instance, uh, apt get and all, all of those things uh, uh, built in there. Um, this uh, current release is in a, uh, in a uh, uh, alpha mode right now. One of the critical things that we are working on is to uh, enable more media playback and also a uh, hardware accelerated uh, UI. Right now this is uh, software accelerated. So for uh, all of you interested in this, you can see, you know, uh, let's see if this keyboard is, uh, no it doesn't. Yes, this is a very, you know, a normal uh, Linux experience. We even have included Python here. So 2 plus 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. This keyboard is very small for my hands. <laughs> um, there's uh, uh, a possibility uh, here, obviously, to, uh, to launch the uh, software center or to get whatever uh, Debian package that, that you would want. Uh, I have uh, one example here for the desktop users. This is just a word processor. As you see that you have a windowed uh, user experience. that you can access. We are also selling uh, debug boards together with, uh, with the Cotton Candy, meaning that uh, developers that want to build their own kernels, uh, they, can, uh, they can get one of these debug boards, so they have a serial port, uh, and build other type of Linux distros uh, on it as well.